And we now move on to our focus demo. Uh, so we have a focus demo from uh, Guillaume Enard Bontemps, who is from CNES, CNES Computing Center. And he's going to give us a demo of the Pangeo data analysis platform at CNES and its astronomical use cases. Okay, so hi everybody. So good morning, good afternoon, uh, maybe good night for some of you. So yes, I'm, I'm Guillaume Enarmontan from CNES, so the French Space uh, Agency. Uh, I'm in charge of the, the computing cluster here. And uh, I'm also part of the, the Pangeo community. I'm in the Pangeo Steering Council. And I will try to, to present you uh, how uh, Pangeo can be useful to, to analyze uh, big uh, data sets. So please excuse me for my level of English. I've not practiced a lot in the, the last few years. Uh, so I would like to thank Adas and also thanks all the, the, the Pangeo member, especially Ryan Albanetti, who is kind of our leader. So, so let me get, okay. First, why Pangeo? So as you are well aware, science is an iterative process. So where you need uh, to, to, uh, to, to have new ideas, you need uh, observations, you need to perform simulations and which give you new ideas. And then you, you need to, 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 to check them uh, into new observations and so on. So in order to, to, to have this workflow as smooth as possible, you'll need tools to, to explore data set and to, to do interactive analysis. But this is really complicated nowadays because all the all the data sets are, are now coming to a petascale uh, uh, volume. So it's true in Earth observation, which is the, the primary focus of the Pangeo community. So you'll see the the, the NASA statistics uh, around Earth observation data sets that they provide. So more than 200 petabytes in, in the next few years. But it's even more true in astronomy, where with a single mission like uh, Euclid, uh, you've got uh, almost 200 petabytes of data that is produced. So this is in order to, to ease the analysis of this big data set that Pangeo community is working on. So what is Pangeo? So maybe I need to, I don't know how to close this one. I don't know if you see, Never mind. Uh, so Pangeo is a, a community platform for big data uh, at, at first geoscience, but uh, I, I think and what I want to show he, here today is that it can be applied to other kind of science. Uh, so what is Pangeo? First, it's a community made of uh, scientists and developers and also administrators of, uh, of a computing platform. Uh, we try to contribute to a lot of open source software that I will uh, talk about uh, next and we also try to to build and to provide the means to build the open source infrastructure to to analyze big data sets so what is the pangeo architecture so it's uh, first uh, you use jupiter so you've seen already a lot of demonstration using jupiter so i think many of you are familiar with this uh, with this notebook tool uh, then we also use uh, some uh, some layer to to model the the data that we need to process. So for geoscience, it's X-ray that can be used to to modelize uh, multidimensional data sets. Uh, then underneath, we mainly use Dask, which is a Python package uh, which allows to to distribute processing into into many uh, many servers, many many nodes, using a master worker paradigm. And most important of all, you need data, and in order to perform a quick and interactive uh, an analysis, you need analysis ready data. So this means that the, the data format uh, that uh, you use when dealing with big data sets is really important. And I think this will be an underlined in other talks in, uh, in ADAS this year. So Pangeo is all about integrating uh, an, open, uh, uh, an open software stack. So talk about Jupyter for the user inter interface. We we'll talk about Dask, but you could also use a uh, Apache Spark for the scalable compute. 
For the resource management, uh, uh, one important point is that Pangeo can be used uh, on your uh, personal computer, but also on HP HPC cluster using job queuing system, or in the cloud with uh, with things like uh, Kubernetes. And, and then you you need the, the storage systems that, that allow you to to pull and to and to rapidly analyze the, the data. So this can be H performance storage systems like Luster or, or GPFS, but also uh, object storage. In order to use uh, object storage, you'll need, uh, as I said uh, just earlier, some uh, data format that are compatible with that. For example, in geoscience, NetCDF is not yet really uh, compatible with, uh, with cloud storage system. So in Pangeo, we, we developed around ZAR, which is uh, another data format that, uh, that uh, allows to use uh, object store to perform distributed uh, analysis. So the CNES computing platform is a classical HPC cluster uh, with a moderate size. We've got 12,000 cores, and uh, but we focus uh, on development and on uh, on analysis uh, uh, workflows where the user can interact in real time with the with the platform. This is why we decided to deploy a Pangeo platform on top of it. So what is a Pangeo? How is Pangeo deployed at Nest? So first you need a Jupyter Hub, which is deployed on a, on a virtual machine in our, in our cluster. Uh, what does Jupyter Hub? It does three things. First, it authenticates the users through, through our LDAP directory. Then it will start the, the notebook server for each user, and it will start this server using the or job queuing system so that the notebook server are started directly on the computing platform and have a, a, a really good access to the data that, uh, that is stored in, in the platform. And then uh, the Jupyter Hub, once the notebook server is started, just uh, proxifies the connection from the user browser to the, to the notebook server. Uh, so we, you can use uh, our Pangeo platform from inside Knest network, but also external user can use it with a, with a security layer, the, the, the WAF here, the web application filter. Then from our notebook, as you will see in the demo, uh, we are able to deploy the Dask cluster by, uh, by reserving some resources on our computing platform using a Dask job queue extension, which uh, with a uh, a few lines in a dot book will uh, will book the resources and start uh, a cluster on uh, on some of the computing nodes. So I will start the demo with uh, first an introduction to to Dask using a Binder, so in the cloud, and then I will give a demo of Pongeo on Earth observation uh, and and continue. Uh, on a on demonstration on using Pangeo for uh, Gaia uh, catalog uh, analysis. Uh, I, I, I won't be able to perform the last uh, demonstration on uh, solar physics because it uses Pangeo binder, which is, uh, which is currently blocked by my uh, corporate proxy. So sorry for that. So let's go to my browser which is here. So let's start with Dask. So Dask is the underlying system that uh, allows to, to parallelize task and so to, to perform analysis on a large uh, volume of data. I will just do a simple de demonstration on Dask uh, using just one virtual machine and uh, with low level component of Dask, uh, which are Dask uh, delayed. So. I will try to keep it slow. So first, when using Dask, you start what is called a, a client when using a uh, cluster, sorry, when using Dask distributed. Here's this line. Uh, I, I hope you can see well, I will zoom a little more. This uh, line uh, creates a local cluster and connect a client to it. So it's, uh, it's uh, one line for both actions. So if I start uh, launch it, uh okay so i've not connected sorry i will have to launch the binder again so i hope you're familiar with binder and I'll... okay 
So I'm launching, launching a new binder. It will take a few seconds. So binder, uh, as you may know, allows you to, to launch interactive notebook in the cloud to, to try to reproduce or, or try some, uh, some technology. So, okay. I'm starting the binder. So here's a tool. I've lost my view. So as you can see, there's a desk is integrated, a desk dash, dashboard integrated in, into Jupyter Lab, so that you can uh, see how is going your computation when performing it live. You can also open directly the, dash, the dashboard in another in another tab. So here, I've got to sorry demo effect. So I will, will open some other tab to see uh, what is going on. Okay, sorry. So I've started my, my cluster and I, I will just uh, submit some, uh, some simple job to it. So imagine I've got uh, some, uh, some function, some simulation I want to, to run in a, in a set of parameters. So here it's a really complicated uh, simulation that just sum the, the parameters and it takes a little time, you see, uh, because I sleep between zero and one seconds uh, before performing the, the computation. So let's test it. Okay, so this first run only took uh, 100 milliseconds and it gives the correct results. Let's imagine that uh, we have a 500 uh, list uh, of, uh, of parameters that we want to apply this method on. So. With a normal Python, we can do it sequentially by using a for loop, but uh, it will take uh, for the 10 first parameters about five seconds because uh, each uh, each call take uh, between uh, zero and uh, and one seconds. You can use Dask to easily parallelize this. Just we we will use delayed to do that. Delayed allows to to make a function lazy, so so that it's not executed uh, right now but it will be executed when you ask it and we will use the desk cluster to to distribute it so on a single machine it's basically like a, a multi-processing uh, kind of function so i built with dust delay a list of operations i want to perform and then i've done nothing right now i've just built the list and to run it parallel we i just have to call dust compute this will start. Okay, so this one is not well refreshed. This will start the computation, and as you see, it has run in parallel in four threads, so it took less uh, less time. So let's try to apply it on all our uh, all our uh, input parameters. So here, the demo effect. You should have the the task stream that uh, is working, that is live, uh, displaying all the computation that is uh, currently uh, currently uh, happening. So sorry, you won't see it right now. Uh, and uh, what I wanted to say next next is when you have a dust cluster, you can scale it to have more resource and to speed up the computation. Okay, this was really a low level demonstration of what can desk do desk can do. Uh, with delayed, you can build really complex graphs of uh, dependent tasks uh, that you will then execute and that will uh, and you will be able to to gather the result back uh, in the end. So let's let's go with a more complex example. If I am able, okay, sorry, the trouble with this. Okay, let's go to the Pangeo CNES platform. So here. I'm connected to the to the Jupyter Hub of our cluster, and I will I will give you a demonstration on uh, on uh, Earth science analysis. Analysis. Sorry, the notebook is in French, but you can see it on the the, the Pangeo gallery in English, uh, working in the cloud. You can play it in Pangeo binders, which will give you access to a lot of cloud resources. So it's an, an analysis on the sea surface altimetry, so the, the height of the of the ocean, and we'll try to to see uh, if the the global warming is a real thing or not. 
So here, same as before, I will start a Dask cluster, but it's a cluster that is connected to a platform. So we're using PBS cluster because uh, we are using PBS uh, uh, job queuing system uh, at CNES. Here, what I say is I want to start a cluster with each worker using uh, four cores and 20 gigabytes memory. And I want 12 workers of this. So you can see there's a nice widget here, which updates in real time once the worker has started. So it tries to find the resources to start my 12 workers. So here it is. I have my 12 workers and 48 cars uh, uh, booked in, uh, in the platform. Uh, OK. Then I connect a client to this cluster to tell the, the Python interpreter that uh, it, it can use it. When using X-Array, so the, the modeling layer in top uh, of Dask, uh, you don't, we won't talk in Dask anymore. You, you will only use the X-Array interfaces, which allow you to, to do complex operation. It's kind of uh, similar to, to Pandas, uh, to Pandas the library for those who know it, but it's, uh, it works with multidimensional data set. So, I import X-Array and so I will open a data set which is uh, stored in a ZAR format on, on the disk. So let's see what it, what it does. So here it reads all the metadata from this data set and uh, displayed, displays the, the data set and what is composed of. So you can see it's a, a data cube with, a, with a close to 9,000 time step and with a with 700 and uh, 1,400 uh, points in latitude and long longitude. So you can see some information on the data set. For example, uh, how we will use the sea level anomaly uh, variable. And you can see that the, the, the total uh, uh, size of this data set is uh, 73 gigabytes. So it's not a scale yet, but it's for the demonstration. Uh, so what can we do with that? First, we can just plot some uh, images. So here, we just take uh, one time step, read it, and plot it in our notebook. So you can see how it looks. So the sea level anomaly uh, in, the, in the globe. What we will do now is with a single line, we will compute the mean by, uh, by time step uh, of, the, of, the, of the sea level on the entire globe. So here, I launched the computation, and you can see that uh, we can display uh, what the, what Dask is doing uh, on the background. So you can see each worker computing task, performing task, at computing the mean of on in chunks, each chunks of the data. So it's really uh, it's really fast to to analyze this uh, 73 gigabytes because we have uh, 48 cores working on it. Once it's done, you can plot, and uh, we'll see that yes. Global warming is true. The, at least the the ocean eight is uh, is, is growing uh, with uh, three millimeters per year uh, or about. Uh, okay, so there's other computation because uh, here we didn't uh, take into account the the weight of the uh, the, the globe geometry, which is not. Uh, between latitude and longitude weighted uh, the same, so we can just correct this computation with the weight of each uh, each uh, cell. So it's a bit longer to start because the graph of computation with Dask, which is generated by, by X-Array, is, uh, is a bit complex. But it, it should start in a few seconds. And you will see, normally, just in, at the right, the, the computation. OK, so you can see that there are more steps in the, in the computation graph. But with uh, all our workers, we are able to do these, in, these computations uh, in uh, near real time to have uh, uh, fast results. And we can compare the two. OK, so with the weighted average, we have uh, slightly different uh, results, but uh, it's still the same. Uh, the sea level is growing. Uh, OK, so. Let's see uh, an astronomy use case on how we can use Pangeo with the, the Gaia Data Release 2. So I will you just. Yeah. You have about 10 minutes. 
Okay, perfect. So many of you may be familiar with the, the, the Gaia Data Release 2 dataset, which is uh, provided by ISA. So we download it uh, at CNES uh, from the CSV uh, format and converted it to Parquet, which, which is a, a tabular format optimized for, for distributed computing, both on HPC, but also in the cloud. And uh, we, we will perform some basic analysis on this using a Dask data frame, so which is a, our, our collection manipulation uh, data layer. Dask data frame is just like Pandas data frame, but it's uh, distributed, distributed, so it can uh, uh, accelerate the computation. So same as before, I will start first a Dask uh, cluster by, uh, by reserving some servers in the in uh, my HPC cluster, so here uh, you'll see that it's not the same parameters because uh, I want to have more more power because I will load all the data set into memory to to make the analy analysis of the data uh, more interactive. So my worker are starting because I have a high priority on my resources. <laughs> So here you can see all the data are starting. I will connect a client to the cluster. So data set in Pocket is made of 5,000 files, 5,000 chunks. And it's about this time, 50, uh, okay, five, uh, 543 gigabytes of compressed uh, gzip, gzip uh, data, data. So I will uh, try to browse all this data uh, interactively. So first, I read the, the packet file. So here, I don't read the dat data. I just read the, the metadata of the, of the collection. So it takes a few seconds because it checks uh, all the integrity of the data set. So here it is. So here's my memory data model of the data is, uh, is OK. What I will do next, I will persist all this data into memory because uh, I have uh, access to uh, enough resources. So 1.4 terabytes of uh, memory distributed in, uh, in several nodes. In order to, to accelerate the next, uh, the next step. So here you will see that it can be quite fast to load all the data because uh, we have access to a, a fast uh, distributed uh, storage. So you can see all my workers reading the chunks of data and uh, persisting uh, it uh, in memory. So here it is. I've got all my data in memory. So what can I do now? I, will, I can do anything that Pandas provides. So it's, it's not as elaborate as, uh, as a sky that we'll see uh, previously because it's only uh, an analysis of uh, a, a, a data a tabular format. But what can I do? So just try to, to compute the, the length of the data set. So how many stars do we have in this data set? So you can see that it's really fast because all is already in memory. And 1.7 billion of stars. So I think it's the correct uh, length of the Gaia DR2 uh, data set. Then we can do uh, some statistics, some data exploration using, uh, using a Panda API. So for example, I don't think this is really useful, but <clears throat> you can compute the, the mean of the radial velocity of the star. So you can see that it's, it's a basic map reduce kind of uh, workflow. So we compute the mean on each chunk and uh, we have the final mean. Maybe more useful, we, we can try to, to find the 10 biggest stars in, the, in these data sets. So let's do it. Try to. You can see it on a few seconds in an interactive way. We can compute such uh, such things. So I don't know uh, what stars this is, but uh, here is the the biggest uh, radius uh, that we can see in the in the Gaia dataset. Uh, maybe something uh, that is a little more interesting. We can also uh, plot some figures to uh, to 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 display uh, the, the galaxy star map that uh, it's an image, a classical image uh, when using Gaia dataset. And uh, it's uh, really pretty. So using PyV's uh, uh, stack, 
Python stack will use uh, so bokeh uh, data shader all of views to display an interactive map uh, of uh, the galaxy. So not uh, again not as crazy interactive as uh, is a sky map because uh, it's uh, really low level, but we can plot the star density density of all the galaxy uh, according to to uh, celestial coordinates. So here. We launched the computation. So data shader uh, li library uh, just computes several things to to display the star density map, and in uh, in maybe 10, 20 seconds, uh, it will display the the star density map after our final transfer into my notebook. So here it is. We've just uh, plotted uh, the 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 sky map using uh, using Gaia data. It's a, an interactive plot, so we can uh, zoom in. So first, we don't see a lot of details, but data shader and under the hood will recompute uh, this data to 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 show a more detailed view of this part of the galaxy. So I, I don't know wh which part I, I just selected, but uh, we just have to wait a few seconds, and uh, it will uh, display it uh, in a more detailed way. So let's wait a bit, time it to uh, compute all the information it needs. And here it comes. <laughs> here. OK, so it's. Uh, in, a, in in maybe 20 or 30 seconds, you, you, you can just uh, move around and and watch this uh, and explore this data set. So I, I'm not an astronomer, so I, I, I won't be able to, 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 to explain a, a lot of things on this data set. But it just, uh, just to, to show you that uh, with Pangeo stack, I, I think you can do a lot of things with, uh, with big data sets uh, when, uh, when you know a bit <laughs> of uh, Python programming. So the last demo was using uh, solar physics uh, images, which were really beautiful. I won't be able to show you, but the basics are the same. With this, uh, it's, a, it's a stack of uh, solar images that you just, uh, you, just, uh, you just stack the image together in different time step, build a data cube, and then with, uh, with Pangeo, you will be able to do uh, cross correlations or display some images or things like that. And it really speeds up the, the ana analysis of such data sets. So, OK, I think uh, I finished. Just uh, if you're interested, please uh, engage uh, in the in Pangeo community. And I think there are uh, several other talks uh, on Thursday that we'll talk about uh, some, some Pangeo ecosystem software, uh, uh, especially Dask. So, Please uh, watch them if, if you want to, to find more uh, about this stack and what you can do with it. Thank you, everyone. Thanks very much, Guillaume. That was great. As Arthur C. Clarke said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. <laughs> that looked pretty magical to me. Uh, We've got some questions in the Q&A. Uh, first from Toma. Thomas, how well is Dusk performing in a multi-user environment, each spawning concurrent tasks? So uh, there were several discussions in the start of Pongeo uh, uh, around this. Uh, what we do, the, the normal workflow right now, is to let the underlying infrastructure deal with the multiple user. That, that is, uh, on, on our HPC cluster, we have uh, PBS, which is a job queuing system. And the idea is that each user will reserve some resource using PBS and start its own Dask cluster and work with it. So each user has its personal Dask cluster. And in the cloud, it's the same thing. It, it, the same thing, sorry. Each user just start its cluster using some resources and uh, can compute with it uh, without uh, being uh, disturbed by uh, other users. Great, thanks. And there's a couple of technical questions from Simon. Uh, how much memory is required on a cluster relative to the data size? And how do you choose your dusk array chunk sizes? I don't <laughs> know if you can answer that quickly. If not, follow up on Discord, but if there is a quick answer. 
the quickest answer is that uh, you need to to try <laughs> and uh, and know well your data set to 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 find this uh, this complex settings uh, the each chunk uh, usually we 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 are advising uh, between 100 megabytes and 1 gigabyte per chunk but then uh, it's uh, yes you, you just have to try and find the, the best settings to to have the, the better ana analysis times all right thanks very much for that